so happy for this team, so happy for Sanford University. I remember sitting in this deal our first year. We played uh, as a 10 seed. Our first year here, we won six games. We came in here. We lost by 35, 40 points to Mercer. And I remember we had to recruit players. It was my first recruiting class. We had to convince guys that we could win this league. I said in that press conference we'd win this league, that we'd get the top of this league, and we'd win this tournament. And we did it. It's so difficult to do something like this and win a SOCON championship. But do you know how surreal it has to be for players to be the first to do it? Think of the first player. These are the first guys to win a SOCON championship for our university. And that's so hard to do because now all the teams that come after them will be able to see it and they'll be able to believe it because it's been done before. And I'm so proud to do it with this group. I told someone earlier today that I've never wanted a team to win a championship more than this team right here. In a day and age where there's a lot of me going on, we had so many upperclassmen come in and buy into roles that would equal winning. And I'm just so happy for these guys. I'm so happy for our university. Questions from the room? Third row. Uh, Bucky, for you, what does it mean, as you said, to do this in your hometown, to deliver on those promises that you gave to guys like Ryland on that phone call when he was in the portal? What does this mean to some? It's unbelievable because there's so many people here that had such a big part in us accomplishing this. A lot had to do with Sanford. A lot didn't. And they may not have been a Sanford fan, but the city jumped behind this program, this university. And um, we wouldn't have done it without everybody's support. We had so many people fly up here for this game. We're in that red that are Sanford fans and Sanford supporters now. But like I said, for these guys, when I called this guy up and he's got all these options, could go to Notre Dame, Gonzaga, all these other schools. I say, bro, you come here with me. You're going to have the most fun you've ever had in your life. I know you had a great time in high school. We're going to go do that again. Yeah. And he rolls here with us and says, you know what, I'm in. And I said, how special would it be to do something that has never been done before? He came, comes here, wins two championships here, and has Sanford in the NCAA tournament. How about this guy? I had to talk this guy into coming home. He goes in the portal after we won six games from Birmingham, Alabama. He could have gone to different spots, different spots. I said, bro, you come here, me and you together. We'll put it on the map. We'll do it for Birmingham. Yeah. And he rolled back here to Sanford. And in his last SOCON game, his last SOCON game, he has 23 points and eight rebounds in 21 minutes and takes home the first Southern Conference Tournament Championship. What about this guy right here? What about my man right here? My guy right here, all right? We had to go get him. I had to go on a dang two-seater plane to go get this guy. I thought I was going to die catching this guy here. Hey, he, he had some recruitment, but I saw it in this dude, man. I saw who he was. And you look at him right there, he's the most valuable player in yeah. this whole tournament. Yeah. All right? Yeah. So how fun is that, man? How fun is that? <laughs> More questions. <laughs> John. Um, a chore. Uh, just talk about how hard you worked over the off season to get yourself where you were into this moment right now. I ain't gonna lie. This person, the man sitting right next to me right here, Jermaine Marshall, he picked me up every day in the summer to go and work out yeah. every day mm -hmm. every literally every day he from here i ain't go home since 2018 so i'm here you know what i'm saying we went to work out every day at 205 hoops shout out noob <laughs> every day yo word yo yo, word. It wasn't for this, yo word. no real stuff it wasn't for him i don't and him and coach net and coach buck for believing in me i don't think i'll be here right now where i am right now mm -hmm. shout out to them for real for <laughs> shout out to them more questions. <laughs> Third uh, so, a chore, I assume you slept pretty well last night. <laughs> I just wanted to clarify, you slept well. I, I slept better than Garrett Hicks. He was. He woke up very early. He was very excited for his game. I, when I woke up, he was on his computer. So, I, I, I slept really well. Better than Hicks. Uh, also, Jermaine, what does this mean for a guy like you? Like Bucky said, come back here, come back to your hometown, and do it and deliver on those promises again that you set out but start the year? Man, it means so much, man. I remember I was in Akron, wasn't playing that much, so I remember getting a phone call from him saying all the stuff that we did this year, we did it. We were going to win the championship. We were going to go to the NCAA 
And when I was at Akron, I was just ready to get away because I wasn't playing. I wasn't happy there. And just to, to believe in him and just know what he did in high school and to actually come back in college and do it, and everybody didn't believe in us. Everybody still don't believe in us, but we go prove everybody wrong. And to do it with these group of guys, bro, they, bro, we we work so hard at practice. Like every day is a war. Yeah, they don't understand how hard our practice is. If these other teams come to our practice, they will quit. First day. <laughs> be, First day. I gave somebody a, a broken nose. Like we black eyes. We do, it's physical every day. It's a war. And to just do with these group of guys, because we work so hard. We put in so much time in this. It means so much. I'm so proud of you guys. Love I'm so guys. proud. I'm so <laughs> proud of you, Coach. Oh, my. Bro, Bucky Ball, man. Man. Our <laughs> PG, Rollins. I, shut up. Yo, that's the best PG in the country. Let me say that right now. That's the Our best. Shut up. Everybody. Shut up, shut up Mr. Taylor. It's everybody. Shut up, Mr. It's, Taylor, Mr. It's, Mr. It's shout really out to them. everybody. Like, it's not just one person. It's really everybody coming together and come for this. Just a win. Everybody got the same mindset to do better. And this is not just with basketball. This is with every program that go to Sanford. Everybody want one thing, and that's a win. And we've been winning ever since we got here, and we go continue to win ever since he here. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all I <laughs> Any questions for Ryland so he can follow this? <laughs> no, I don't want to follow it. No, y'all have to ask Ryland. the best. That's the best point. Like John, you John have to ask question. Question. There seem to be a lot of different personalities on this team. Just talk about being the steadying force among those personalities. Yeah, as, as, as you can tell, I have a hard job keeping these two in line. <laughs> hard. You don't, you don't know how many times refs come up to me, hey, can you watch? Can you can you stay on number four and fourteen? Like, hey, it's it's the first play of the game, and they're already going at each other. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of my job is just you know be steady in practice. I mean, you don't know how hard these two go at practice. They're on opposite teams almost every day, and I mean it's life or death. Like, there's over five push-ups too. And five, five for real, five. It's, it's six to it's six to five, and there's no layups. I mean, broken noses. It, it all happens. Um, you know, shout out to these guys. They deserve it. They set the ropes for Sanford. I mean, their work ethic, I knew it right from the second I arrived at Sanford on May, whatever, May 30th. Um, they set the tone right from the start. And I'm just so happy for them that they get to experience the uh, March Madness with Dance Baby. Any other questions? John, go ahead. Uh, Bucky, uh, two years ago, you guys had a really tough loss in the semifinals. And, and in that press conference, he talked about being back here year after year. And then um, to deliver on that, though, it's it's one thing to say, it, but to, to deliver on it with the adversity, with all the injuries, is there, is there a point in the season that you just, you know, just kind of had to just trust your guys more than more than normal because of the, all the, in, the injuries? You know, real teams and real people, in life, they're able to overcome adversity. And that's kind of what makes you, like, you know, you heard the saying. They've heard it a million times. They've heard it from me. They're probably tired of hearing it. Like, if you can't overcome adversity, then you're incapable of accomplishing anything significant in your life because the whole point of something being significant is that you had to overcome a tremendous amount of adversity to do it, like that basketball game. What we make? How many threes we make in that game? Five. Five. <laughs> adversity, foul trouble, this, that, and another. Um, but I saw this group, and I said it in the summer. I'm one of these guys that's for real. I say this. Like, when if I don't think this this, this team has it or, or a group has it, I say, we're missing this. I don't know if the leadership's going to get there. I don't know this. I saw this group, and I said, I think we'll win the league this year because I saw what they had and who they were. Um, I told you before how I never wanted a team to win more than I wanted this team to win right here. And um, I was talking to someone before this tournament started. And I said, uh, they were asking me, how do you feel? Most coaches are this or that. And, you know, hey, downplay their team as coach talk. And I said, I would be very surprised if we don't win this tournament. When you get great people together and they come together like we have, adversity is not going to stop anything. And um, – that's what our team was this year. We overcame everything. We set every Sanford record. If you think about it, when we talked about those those uh, promises that I said we do, you know, we won three SoCon championships the past two years, and this ain't going to be the last one. We're going to keep recruiting the right people and have the right people in our program 
that are about the right things that will carry on and follow the guys that you saw play today. Time for one more, Vinny. I got something to say, too. Shout out to ETSU because them boys, they did not quit. They did not stop. They kept going, and they made us work for everything we did. So I want to say good um, good game to ETSU, and y'all gave us um, y'all best foot. So congrats to ETSU, too. I'm going to say something on, on that as well, okay, Co- Coach Brooks. That, I mean, they're, they're going at some point, you know, and I hope uh, I, I, I say this, you know, but at some point they're going to cut the nets down. They will do it. They play extremely hard. They play with a lot of confidence. Some people get basketball wrong. They think it's all like so is the prettiest, you know. Basketball, I, I said it out there, basketball's a war. And those were ten soldiers on the floor at all time tonight. And um, he's starting a good thing over there. They're going to be a force in the league. I think that's a good way to end this one. All right. Congratulations to Sam for good luck uh, in the NCAA tournament. Shout out, Bucky Ball. Shout out, Bucky Ball.